Hello and welcome. You're tuned to the Leg Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview podcast. We're live, BP. We yeah. are live wow. from Cambridge. We're always live on a Friday, though, when we think about it. But yeah. uh, I can see you, though, in person. This amazing. is nice to be uh, joining you at Cambridge Raceway on mm. what's going to be a big night tonight, Night of Champions. It will be, yes. Um, the weather, uh, as we speak, uh, is not that great, but let's hope for Dave Branch and the entire team and, and the industry itself, really, that they have a, a great night because everything's yeah. uh, set up for, for a super night. I know the ticket sales are through the roof as well, so, um, yeah, Fingers crossed that they can have the, the night they're looking for and this weather can blow through, hopefully. Yeah. It's supposed to do that, doesn't it, though, the weather? We're supposed to get a reasonably fine night tonight. Yeah, look, look around at 4 or 5 o'clock is the expectation that there won't be any rain, so um, <laughs> let, let's hope that is the case. But, um, yeah, fields have come up fantastic and, and really sets up the weekend because I know it's a, it's a good weekend overall and, of course, we even have Tarapa on Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday as well. Mm. We'll look forward to with good fields there. So, yep, good racing weekend and, of course, across the Tasman as well. Yeah, absolutely. We'll touch on some of those uh, harness markets just a a little bit, but news during the week, BP, Imperatriz came back to New Zealand after a tremendous, uh, you know, run of form mm. and was ret- retired during the week, the champion mayor. Yeah, and, and I think it was a shock to everybody um, to be able to read that news coming through yesterday afternoon when, when it started filtering through around three o'clock, four o'clock. Um, I actually couldn't believe it. I, I honestly no. could not believe that uh, what I was reading. I had to double check uh, a, a number of different sources, but let's just reflect on on what a horse she was and and the fact that you know she won 10 group ones and she's been able to do it and possibly one of the hardest racing jurisdictions in in australia to be able to win those sprinting group ones we we, we don't see new zealand horses go over there and win group ones in australia like she did and and look her performances around mooney valley are are, are ones that are going to stand out an unbeaten record around that venue look and even her efforts i thought down the straight at flemington held so much merit and and what she was able to do and of course a gutsy run last saturday as well uh, in the tj smith so yeah i know there's some sad racing fans out there uh, that we're not going to see here and not push for that Everest uh, in, in the spring, but uh, they've done right by the horse at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, look, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we would never dreamed of a New Zealand uh, horse would be over mm. there winning sprinting group ones in Australia and, and stacking them up as well. Well, just being competitive, just actually mm. trying to beat half the field home. Uh, yeah. It was sometimes a, a, a massive achievement for a New Zealand sprinter to go over there and be competitive against you know, some of the best sprinters that, that are going around in Australia. And, and of course, we know that those sprinters can then go uh, across the world and, and, and also uh, race at their elite level. Mm. So uh, w- with what she's done, uh, I think it's always hard when you're right in the moment when you have a horse like her that's won all these races it almost takes a a couple of months almost a year in reflection to actually go back and go well she actually was actually that good she she was the superior sprinter at the time uh and she was trained by that by kiwis and um yeah ridden by um, of course our kiwi jock and opie boston so a lot to be proud about really yeah yeah 100 percent let's head south to the dry of the Petoni studio, my normal home, and say good morning to Stephen Hunt and Paul Mawadi. Steve, uh, she's got to be Australian Horse of the Year, surely, in Peritrees. Good morning, boys. Morning, gents. You should have to go up favourite if we set a market currently on. Here's a little bit to unfold. Obviously, the big day on Saturday at Randwick and the Brisbane Carnival, etc. But yeah, if you're writing up a book, you'd have to be a short price fave to take out Australian Horse of the Year. I always go back to Imperatrice when she started her campaign as a juvenile. She won at Otaki on a heavy track, Paul. And then she went second up to Ellerslie in the Eclipse on New Year's Day. And she clashed with a stable mate with the name of Sword of State, who won on debut as well. Uh, the three or the two-year-old Colt out of the Tiaka Alban. He won by, I think, roughly six or so lengths when winning on debut at Tarapa. So he clashed against the stable mate in Peritres. When we were setting that market, Sword of State went up deep into the red, I think $1.80, $1.70 from memory, where Imperatriz opened at $21. Well, I can tell you, after 24 hours of trading a few years back, we got a decent lead on how good Imperatriz was. She was crunched in the market, stable money, external money, the lot up and down the country. I think she started in the low teens and the job was done. She won accordingly, beating Sword of State by three or four lengths that day at Ellerslie and took out her first feature race. And look, the rest is history, Paul. She's just been a superb horse. As you say, 10 group ones, five in the last season. And Leah, she's going to go up for sale as a broodmare, and you'd have to say Yulong would be a short price fave to, to purchase her going on recent history. She's a super, super mare, and uh, we was, we've been spoiled, to be fair, and it'll just make it that much harder for any of our other uh, sprinters when heading over there. They'll be measured against Imperatriz now, um, and as Dad said, um, those group ones that she picked up over there at the valley, um, well, she was the queen of the valley, uh, to be fair, so, yeah, she'll... Um, 
she'll get a pretty penny. And obviously, uh, the team at Tiako knew they had something very, very special early on. Um, and you guys took the brunt of that early on too. So, uh, no, very sad to see her retired. But uh, I think we're so lucky to actually be able to witness um, so many of her wonderful, wonderful victories uh, over her career. Maybe the eclipse of yeah, Puritry Stakes. Oh. <laughs> it's got a nice <laughs> touch to it, feel about it going to the future. Yeah, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna put your hand in the ring to buy a PP. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> I'm gonna pluck if I can buy a bag of peanuts at the moment, but um, no, I won't be doing that. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, special treat time on the leg up. We've dropped Aidan Rodley uh, for the weekend. Uh, he was very disappointed about that, but we've got a more than capable replacement. We're joined now by Jane Ivel from Sydney, live from Randwick. Good morning, Jane. Uh, probably just a word on Imperatrice from you, I guess. Good morning, team. Fantastic uh, to be part of the show. Well, of course, Imperatrice was uh, a wonderful mare for New Zealand, wasn't she? And it was a real privilege to be able to watch her in Melbourne and the deeds that she did on the track. Obviously, unbeaten around the valley and uh, pretty proud to say you're a Kiwi when uh, Mark Walker was picking up Group 1's left, right and centre with her. We're going to miss her. It would have been really exciting to see her feature in an Everest. But, look, as always, uh, Tiakau do the best from for their horses and they've made the right decision for her it's going to be really exciting to see how she sells at public auction but just guys considering you are a bunch of bookies when you are setting up your market for Australian horse of the year don't forget about a Caulfield Melbourne Cup winner and without a fight mm, yeah no, you make a good point he's going to be right in the uh, calculations Caulfield Cup Melbourne Cup winner without a fight Jane racing marches on this weekend second day of the championships and there's plenty of Kiwi interest obviously highlighted by orchestral but Campionessa Quintessa Maharajan and the Sydney's Cup so the Kiwis will make their presence felt uh, tomorrow afternoon yeah, hopefully we have a little bit better day this side of the Tasman that we did day one of the championships. And, of course, Orchestral, certainly the flag bearer for the Kiwis on Saturday. We've been out and seen her during the week, and uh, she just looks a picture, this filly. First time I'd seen her in the flesh, and there's no doubt I was uh, really impressed by what I saw from her. She's going to have her seventh run of the campaign in the Oaks this Saturday, and you wouldn't know it looking at her. Uh, I said yesterday in the words of Roger James, he said she's just thriving. She's got her head in the feed bin. She's doing everything right, and James McDonald's certainly given her the tick of approval. He's ridden her a couple of times throughout the week, and he's really happy with the way that she's feeling and the way that she's going about her business. So, look, to the eye, she is in immaculate order. We wouldn't expect anything less from Roger James. He doesn't get too ahead of himself, but she's going to be really hard to beat in the Oaks come tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, Quintessa will have something to say, BP, as well, I would have thought. Yeah, well, I mean, look, her run was very good. I mean, uh, just beaten by Antrim Coast last time to the races. Of course, extra distance uh, for her and, and Zadozzi, a uh, winner of yeah. a, a VRC Oaks as well. But, yeah, look, the opposition uh, is strong and behind, but she's a deserved $1.65 mm -hmm. favourite. And, uh, yeah, let's hope she can get the job done. Yeah, a couple of, couple of things I need to ask you, Jane, before we get you out of here. Um, when are we going to see you back on Kiwi Shores? And... Uh, are you going to have to put up with Aidan Rodley tomorrow afternoon during the trackside coverage? <laughs> I was hoping I'd gotten rid of Aidan Rodley, <laughs> but um, look, it sounds like he might be part of the coverage. But look, it's OK. Uh, we tend to get along all right, Aidan and I. We go well back. Yeah, uh, look, no. I have actually already made it yeah. to New Zealand shores. I've been home and then back over here again. But uh, I head home from Sydney on Sunday and then I become a permanent New Zealand resident again. So what I'm doing right now, Thad, is soaking up the sun here at Randwick because we've got outstanding <laughs> conditions here. Blue skies, not a cloud in the sky and uh, look mm. I'm not really looking forward to going home to Palmerston North weather particularly that wind but hopefully I acclimatise pretty quickly Yeah hey absolutely uh, look, we look forward to seeing you on our screens tomorrow Jane and during the coverage of Championships Day 2 and we look forward to seeing you back in New Zealand uh, very very soon thanks for joining us on the leg up Yeah, it's been uh, great to be part of the team. Uh, as I've said, uh, we've got some really exciting Kiwis to look forward to day two of the championships. You mentioned Sean Ritchie's stayer. So, look, we'll be cheering them home and hopefully we can pick up a, a couple of Group 1 wins this side of the Tasman. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Jane Ivel for joining us on the leg up. We appreciate her time.
BP, we're at Cambridge Raceway, uh, and we've talked about the weather. I won't go on about it because I'm not one to complain, as you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, but but some, a couple of great races tonight, Look, obviously highlighted by the race by Grins, but the TAB yeah. Trot yes. uh, as well. It looks a fantastic race. You've been part of the sort of build-up in terms of the draws and things. Yeah. What's been happening in the marketplace, and who's going to be a big chance tonight? Yeah, it's been a really good week, actually. Um, uh, kicked off with what happened at Smith & McKenzie on, on Monday night with the barrier draw, uh, and just having the, Inst the Australians involved... Uh, uh, it really does have almost a, a mini inter dominion feel to it, and that's what the we've got with the with the TAB Trot race. Mm. Yeah, you've got the four Australians have drawn one, two, three, four, and then you've got how that happen? Yeah, yeah, what happened to visitors drawn? <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, so uh, then you then you've got the, the the big bangers out wide as well. So. Just Believe is the favourite at $2.10, a two-time uh, Inter-Dominion winner uh, is Just Believe. Call Me the Breeze, uh, who was the, the, the gate speed horse and uh, a lot of interest around Call Me the Breeze around the early crow market uh, at $2.30. That is the favourite for that market. Yes, <laughs> You're a soft crow. spot for the oh, yeah, uh, yeah. early crow market. Yeah, you throw me an early crow market, I'll play into it. <laughs> um, uh, the, the other runner that does have gate speed is RC Phoenix at $6. Muscle Mountain didn't... Uh, fair well in the barrier draws at 7.50 mm. and Oscar Bonavina who has been very well supported uh, yeah. over the last 24 hours uh, at that double figure price sitting at $8 mm. will be hoping that things happen electric up front uh, for Oscar Bonavina so that's the TAB yeah. trot yep the race by grins the race by grins uh, is an interesting market because the Purdens. That's right. You've got yeah. um, Don't Stop Dreaming, who's drawn in barrier number two. And uh, as soon as that barrier draw came up, the, the, the price was around that dollar ninety mark, $2 mm. uh, for that horse. So one eighty five now is the quote. Merlin, $3.50. Mm. And Speak the Truth. A speak the Truth can come off the gate. Early crow market for Speak the Truth at $5. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, around $5.50. And I think Kango, drawn barrier number one, will hold a fair bit of interest okay. what happens off the gate. Uh, and he'll be hoping that he just hands up to the right horse. Uh, Merlin can come off the gate as well as the second favourite at $3.50. So a lot of interest what happens yeah. early, uh, but you don't start dreaming is the well-backed favourite for tonight's uh, yeah. the, the race by Grins. Yeah. Gee, it's going to be a good night, and I just hope that this weather can just push away. Um, look, it's been really good weather leading up mm. to... Um, well, you know, the last couple of weeks yeah. have been perfect. So um, we'll have a concert after the races uh, yeah. at around 11 o'clock. Uh, that'll go yeah. through to about 11 o'clock with Coterie coming, which is a New Zealand band that are based out of Western Australia. Uh, look, look yeah. they'll, they'll just lift the roof off this joint uh, if it's uh, hissing by that time of the <laughs> yeah. night and it's a good clear night, so yeah. let's hope so. OK, good luck to Dave Branch and the team and thanks for having us uh, at Cambridge Raceway to host the leg up and we hope you have a great night, Dave. Um, BP, we'll come to you, back to you, because it's Maiden of the Week time. Who have you got? Yes, there was only three races at Ellerslie uh, on Wednesday, but there was certainly a maiden of the week uh, there out of that venue. Mm. And you could have gone maybe the first race as well in Villa Belmero, but I've gone with Sweeney's Day because it's a run by a horse that... Look, the expectation was there because of the last start run behind Tombadachi. Tombadachi form was gold dust because Tombadachi came out and won mm. again since in a rating 65. Really like the second horse in yes, this race as well. Sass Sassparella... Uh, it just looks like a horse you want to find the right maiden race with as well. So Swainier's Day got into the into the right spot uh, and, and gets the job done. So uh, he's a horse who can go on with it. Villa Belmero was very well ridden in the first race as well by Sam Spratt, and you could almost say, say that La Parisienne as a horse to follow out of that race. So I, I was torn between those first two races. Yeah. Just gone with this race here, just in front of um, uh, the first race in Villa Balmero. But um, yeah, definitely both races worth following. Yeah, the second horse, I think, will be the one to follow in Maidens next yeah, time, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. OK. OK, Hawks Bay Cup Day at Otaki. Steve, we'll come to you. What a weather and track are we expecting? Are we dodging the rain at Otaki for Hawks Bay Cup Day? I don't think so. Unfortunately, Thaddeus, there's rain forecasted today, heavy rain, and a few showers tomorrow on race day as well. So, look, the current... Pentrometer reading is around about that five mark, soft five this morning. The rail's in the true position. Last meeting was roughly a week and a half ago on the Monday, and the rail was out seven metres. So they'll just put it back in the true position for their feature day. But as we say, it won't be any better than a soft five. I'd be looking closely to that heavy range come race day in the first race tomorrow afternoon, Thaddeus. Yeah, OK, we'll run us through the market for the Hawks Bay Cup, Steve. Uh, I think it's race number six on the card. Uh, who is favourite, and how's the market shaping? Yeah, well, we had the early scratching yesterday on the current favourite or the, the favourite, the opening favourite in Snazzy, uh, Snazzy Tavi. Um, so, look, that, that horse has come out. Not sure the reasons behind that, but it's left Testify Me as the favourite at $4.20. Gents, Fungai Hu in that second line at $5. Just lukewarm around number two currently. Elegant Lady, 
In terms of best bat runners, sits in that second line, even though it's in the third line in favouritism order, nine into six. Uh, Prince Albi will love any, uh, any aqua floating around Prince Albi from the south. Uh, 7.50 off a peak of $9. A titled, 7.50 out of 4.8.5. Cheval de Foudre, 11 into 8.5 on the quick backup. Sporting Chance drawn the ace at $9. Olive at $14 off a shortener of 13. Sailor Jack looks to be the leader here at $14. And Zachary, who is dual accepted for a race at Tarapa on Sunday as well, but there is a jock here, so potentially starting in the feature. So look, overall summary, Thad, testify me, clearly the best back runner and is the favourite 4.2. Elegant Lady, Prince Albi and Cheval de Fordre have all had support in the first 36 hours. Yeah, okay, very compressed Hawks Bay Cup market BP, and when a favourite comes out, it can be mean there's a little bit of movement, but I want to have a look at the St Ledger first, for the, our current favourite, Testify Me, and also Sailor Jack in commission here. Yeah, look, and we know Sailor Jack will uh, appreciate conditions if they do get into that bracket of, of, of around that heavy nature, and also Testify Me. This was a very good effort in the St Ledger, but this horse picking up the leader and, uh, and taking the race out. Look, he, he's a horse that I know that they've always had a high opinion of, uh, he just seems to be sitting in, in the right spot for tomorrow's race. Mm. Full race winner from 16 starts. A little bit of forgiveness in the ground. Looks ideal. Uh, and and no, that was over the 2,600 metres, winning that St. Ledger. Drops back to the 2,200 metres. Shouldn't be an issue there. He's drawn well. There's a, there's a lot of right ticks around him running a big race in this uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And Sailor Jack, uh, I think if that track does push him that heavy nature, just might be one for maybe Tripeters yeah. and first fours if he, he can run a race. Couldn't rule him out at $14. I mean, he's, no. in the, he's not out of the market, I should uh, say. That's yeah. right. Look, it's a yeah. very even field, and, yeah. and you could make a case for a, a lot of horses, and even with the track conditions pushing in yeah. to, the, to that to that yeah. soft and uh, early stages yeah. of heavy, that, that does bring a few horses into the race. Yeah, OK. Steve Fongai, who uh, raced with the credit in Australia, and ran a good seventh in an Auckland Cup. He's the second favourite currently at $5. Uh, here he is in that Auckland Cup, Steve. Yeah, just presenting three off, uh, three off the rail there in that second slot. But he had a decent run this day, Thaddeus. He was three back rail in the Auckland Cup, but he just didn't stay the two miles. He had every right to, to finish off the race. He didn't disgrace himself, as you say, finished seventh, seventh in the end. Um, look, back in trip suits, and there's no doubt about that. The negative, well, there's no negative around the aqua that's going to fall in the next 24 hours around Fongai Hu. Look, his best performance in New Zealand was two starts back when winning over the hill here, 93.8, which is around the mark to be running in the top three. So, look, a, a horse that often gets well-backed, um, Paul, but at this stage, he's Luke Gorman running for the tab, which is a little bit eye-opening, to say the least, out of a, a punting group of ownership. So, um, look, he's not in my top three, but, uh, look, I've got to respect him in the marketplace, as you say. He's in the top three, the top three currently in the market. But, yeah, look, the back-and-trip uh, suits, but... Yeah, I've got a few in front of them. Yeah. Yeah, I was put Paul, a horse that won't, uh, you're talking about aqua falling, a horse that won't mind it, is the uh, southerner, Prince Albi. His win in the Riveton Cup was pretty dominant. Looks like he's in a good spot for a race like this. Yeah, he certainly is. And, and that win in the Riverton Cup was preceded by a win over 1,500 metres at Wingatui. So he's in the form of his life at the moment. Um, it looks like he's going to get conditions that will really suit him down to a T. Um, he'll want a genuine tempo, and I think he'll probably get that. So there's a lot of boxes being ticked uh, for Prince Albi. Um, look, I, I think he's a big, big chance. I love him uh, at the price. I think he was $9 before the scratching uh, of the favourite. Uh, now into $7.50, but I think he's still worth a very, very good bet. I think it was written by Terry Mosley here, and he just sort of um, cruised into the race and... Um, Gave a, a, a nice sustained run from around the 800 metre mark and just uh, out toughed them down the straight there at Riverton. So, yeah, I, I, obviously, Kelman's not bringing him up here for a haircut. So, I, I really, really am very, very keen around the chances of Prince Elby. Look, I know he has to carry three kilos more than he did in that Riverton Cup win, but I think he's uh, more than capable. Uh, and if we do get that rain, that um, big, big downpour, then uh, I think he's going to be right in yeah. it at the end. The, the weight worries me, lads. Uh, 58 kilograms. He carried 55 last start, as we saw in the Riverton Cup. And that was helped by the presence of Capo Del Impero, who had the clear top rating of mid-90s. And he just fell on perfectly on the weights that day. But, look, his top four performance ratings have all been on heavy tracks. So that's a, that's a tick. But when you're carrying 58 in those previous victories on a heavy track, he's been carrying 56, 55, 54, etc. So 58 is a real leveller, regardless if you've got performances on heavy tracks. So, 
Look, I reckon he's a, he's a slight set against that, just purely on the weights. And Lily Sutherland, look, I'll come to you, BP, on Lily. She's uh, still chasing that premiership in terms of the apprentice, apprentices. Uh, look, I think she's five behind Narajan Palmer, but three, four months ago, we had a head-to-head. -head. Basically, we couldn't split her and Narajan Palmer, but look, I think she got a, a confidence boost last week when winning Rudyard or riding Rudyard to victory last start uh, up north. But prior to that, she had only had three wins from roughly about 100 rides. So we know her capability, but... Yeah, hopefully she can give that chase or that chase to versus Narajan Palmer in that premiership because uh, three or four months ago it was neck and neck, but Narajan's just got his, uh, his whip in front fractionally at this stage. Yeah, and look, a couple of things then. Look, Narajan, uh, as we know, he's, he has spent a, a bit of time on the sideline. You know, he has copped a couple of heavy suspensions. Uh, and, and when he comes back, he, he boy, he, he, he gets his mojo back pretty quick, doesn't he, Narajan Palmer? And look, we saw with Lily Sutherland, the, the real rise for mine for, for Lily came through the New Zealand Cup Week Carnival. She, yeah. she got a lot of confidence with getting good rides, especially from the Pike Barn. Uh, and... and uh, as Stephen said, a little bit of a lull there, but boy, there's a chance to, to really surge now uh, for, for, for Lily over these next couple of months. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be writing her off, uh, you know, making that an intriguing battle as we get uh, closer to the end of the season. More about around Prince Albie. Look, he has won with 57 kilos on a heavy track over distance. Um, so I, I'm happy to take a risk on him mm. having to carry the 58 kilos, knowing that he's a mudluck. He is a horse. Yeah, yeah. He, he, look, he can go, go through all conditions, but he is a horse who really does enjoy wet track conditions. So mm -hmm. if he gets those conditions that are suitable for him, and I even think with where the track sits now, I mean, he gets through soft ground anyway, yeah, exactly. so uh, it, it doesn't have to pelt down for him to be um, a, a winning chance. Mm -hmm. I think he sits at a really each-way uh, yeah. price in the race. I, I, I like him. I'm keen to get around Prince yeah. Albie as well. OK, you and Paul starting to line up here. Uh, why are we having a look at Elegant Lady Steve running 10th? Uh, and a South Island breeder. She's the third favourite at six dollars. We'll just watch her in the uh, in the Tiakau colours there, third, fourth, last. You'll see Narajan go for that dream run along the rail when he gets blocked at a vital stage, roughly around the 200 metre mark. Hard to know or assess where the horse would have finished up if he got that gap along the rail there, but it was closed off. You see here by the current leader, and basically Narajan just set up in the horse in the last furlong, right there, bang. Uh, it, look, it, it definitely finishes closer, uh, but where she would have uh, actually finished remains to be seen. It's one of those ones, how long is a piece of string. But, uh, look, she dropped back from the 2-4 journey in her previous start uh, when winning the Dunedin Gold Cup uh, to 1,600 metres. She needed the tempo to be strong, and it was fairly strong, the breeders at Rickerton last start, and that gave her opportunity to finish strongly. Just things didn't work out as we saw there. But I think stepping back up and trip, Wet track, no issue there. Uh, look, there's been a, a stack of money for her. As I say, she's the second best back runner, even though she sits in that third line. And yeah, I've definitely got her in the mix. I've got, I've got her in the top two currently. But uh, yeah, she has to be a, a, a royal chance just purely on the conditions of the distance, etc. Okay, you've got her in the top two. Who's the top one for you in a Hawks Bay Cup, Steve? And Paul coming, be hop, coming behind him. Yeah, I'll go with Testify Me. Uh, look, he just needs to replicate what he produced at Trentham last start. He beat a good horse uh, from the Central Districts, the Patterson Train Galloper. So I think that's good enough for him. He sits perfectly in the weights with 55 kilograms. Chris Dow knows this horse inside out. He's drawn barrier four. It's just hard to find a knock. A bit like apostrophe last week, seven days ago. Just very hard to find one knock where a lot of his key rivals in this race, I can find at least one knock on those individuals. So, yeah, testify me in front of Elegant Lady 1-2 in the Hawke's Bay Cup, Paul. Prince Alvey, I think the money's going south uh, this weekend. I really uh, like the look of its chances. Uh, he's going to get conditions to suit. Uh, I love the fact Lily Sutherland's on board as well. Um, look, I think it'd be tough, even with uh, the extra three kilos that he uh, had to carry last time out. So Prince Albie on top for me, testify me just in behind. Final thoughts, BP? Yeah, I'm with Prince Albie as well. I think the horse um, can get uh, those conditions to suit. And uh, look, he's shown that he can carry some big weights. So yes, it is a jump up from the Riverton Cup, but uh, he's, in, he's in really good form at the moment. So you're yeah, happy to be with Prince Albie. Lance O'Sullivan award time for another week. BP, who have you found for us for Lance O'Sullivan? It might have a little bit of relevance 
he for is. the Hawks Bay Cup. Yes, it could be because it's a horse who's backing up uh, for tomorrow's Hawks Bay Cup, and that'd have been uh, Chevelle de Fudre because this was a good ride from Matt Cameron. He was able to sit back, sit back, be quiet, uh, and and just wait for all the gaps to open up. This horse was last when turning in. Uh, not sure, not sure too long mm. how the strange footage goes for, but if you can see the horse there that's at the back end of the field right now in the green, yeah. uh, that, that's the winner of the race. Uh, and uh, dives underneath runners, gets the right split. Had been knocking on the door a yeah. number of times, this <laughs> yeah. horse. You know, yeah. it had been unlucky and it had been one of the eye catchers and just needed things to go its way. Uh, and Matt was able to provide that with uh, this runner. And look, maybe it's a case of uh, backing up and being a strong chance in the Hawks' back Yeah, up they as might well. have found the key just riding on completely cold. Yeah. And he got home really strong, didn't he? He did, he did, yep. So, um, yep, cool ride from Matt. And uh, he picks up his, uh, I think it's his second gong oh, uh, now gee. after La Creek uh, oh. with the Lance O'Sullivan Award. So, yeah, he's starting to rack him up on the mental oh, piece. He'll be celebrating tonight, Will Matt Cameron, with <laughs> another Lance O'Sullivan Award. OK, next race we want to have a look at, uh, Steve, is race number seven on the card, and it's the City of Napier Sprint. A competitive uh, race, I thought. Very static market, Thaddeus. Hardly a shift in or out. I'm wonderful tonight. Heads the market at $4.50. If in doubt, get out. Join the ace pace influencer at $5. Shares that second line where we will rock. Bradman at $5.50 on the quick backup. Arisha Reese $6.50 with Bold Bell, who resumes for Bryce Newman. Sergio at $9, then double figures around G-string, etc. And just on G-string, that is one firm at 26 into 21, currently a losing liability with that natural high lay price. But no lead. But a little bit of speaking for number four, we will rock, as there was first up at Trentham a couple of weeks ago. Jeez, this is a competitive market, BP. The first race we're going to have a look at is the Lightning, with uh, quite a few of the combatants competing here. Gee, isn't there? Uh, a lot to talk about here with uh, I'm Wonderful Tonight, who's had a very good uh, preparation, in fact, yeah. I'm Wonderful Tonight, yeah. and uh, finishes into third position here. Of course, Bradman's in this race. Uh, who's then come out and then, of course, won last weekend uh, as well and uh, is a chance, but we'll have to go up, you know, six kilos on that win from last time to the races. And then we will rock, uh, who, who, look, was disappointing yeah, in the race. I tipped him too. And he was very well backed, wasn't he? Mm. He, was, uh, he was strongly played in the marketplace. Uh, I, I've got a little forgive card uh, in my back pocket, and um, I, I'll be uh, presenting that to uh, We Will Rock. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got one too, funnily enough. One. Yeah. I've got one. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I've got quite a stack. I've got a stack of them actually, so um, <laughs> but I don't like to give them out too loosely. Uh, no. So um, ha happy to give one to We Will Rock here because I think that the horse appreciates uh, cutting the ground mm. and does have a very good second up record. And, and, and look, we know the horse can gallop. We've seen the horse been able to perform yeah. in Australia uh, as well. So yeah, I, I think he's a strong chance. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. The, on the favourite, you just t did touch on it. She had a great season yep. uh, for trainer. Now, the, the, the yeah, Sam Minot. Sam yep. Minot, exactly, yeah. And it, she's done incredibly well with the horse and had a great prep, which is nice to culminate it with a win, wouldn't it? It would, because this horse has competed in our, our elite races uh, mm -hmm. in terms of sprinting races, uh, this preparation. Uh, it's a horse that we'll be hoping that the track doesn't get you know too much worse than uh, than the slow yeah, range. It's a horse yeah. who's had two starts on a soft track uh, for, a, for a win and a minor placing, but I'm sure they'll be hoping that it doesn't mm -hmm. go uh, beyond that, but look, everything she does, she's she's been able to front up and, and, and turn up. So, look, she's a deserved favourite in the race, and what mm. looks to be another very even sprint race away yeah. from her. You know, your um, old mate, if in doubt, get out. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, one that was very well backed about four starts ago, and even Bradman on the back up from yeah. last Saturday. Yeah, what about uh, Bradman? Bradman competed in that uh, Lightning Paul, but it came out and won. A flying handicap, if in doubt, boxed on incredibly well for fourth. But this is quite dominant from Bradman. It, it certainly was, yeah, and I thought, I thought it was a wonderful ride by Billy Pinn as well. Um, just settled midfield uh, in that flying handicap and then loomed up uh, at the turn and, and then just let loose down the straight there um, and, and just showed a, a nice sort of explosive finish, I thought, over the top of them. Um, I saw Royden Burgesson uh, not long after the race and he seemed a little surprised with how well Bradman went. So I guess they're just uh, going to strike while the iron's hot and that's why we've seen Bradman going around today. I guess the big negative though is the 59 kilos that Bradman will have to uh, lob around the Ortucky track. Um, if in doubt, I, I thought it was a, a positive run. Um, look, just seemed to, uh, I guess, come to the end of its run uh, with about a furlong to go. Um, but I think there's enough out of that run to suggest that uh, we'll see, uh, if in doubt, um, there at the business end of this race. And, and um, I see there's still no uh, jockey uh, nominated for if in doubt. But, um, yeah, I do give if in doubt a, a big, big chance.
they said Bradman was a bit of a problem child after the after the race BP. Like he's been a bit mm. of a work in progress, yeah. and he had a few things going against him, and he obviously got it all together there. He did. Look, he's a seven race winner. I mean, he is a horse who's um, yeah, he, he's just bubbled away, hasn't he? In sort of that open yeah. grade, and you know, and found those right races. And, mm. and look, off the back of that victory, um, it, it will be a tall order to be able to yeah. you know give more weight away uh, for the weekend. But he's a happy horse. He's in yeah. form. Uh, and he'll, he will like conditions as well uh, for, for tomorrow. Yep. Steve, the last race replay we want to have a look at is Bold Bell uh, competing in the Open Handicap at Trentham. Uh, tell us about Bold Bell. Wins the race and wins it well. Yeah, I wanted to go back to this race, uh, Thaddeus. It was back in October, but there's a lot of similarities between this victory and the conditions of the race to where we are tomorrow afternoon. First up, obviously, Bold Bell has had a couple of trials leading into tomorrow afternoon. He was, or she was first up here on this occasion in an open class race over 1,200 metres. Carried 54 when winning this race. She carries 53 on Saturday. And this was on a genuine off track. Now, she rated a PB this day, 96.8. Only two runners out of their personal bests when you're lining up the field have a high number. We Will Rock and Little Who's, Mo Little Who's Got Moves. So... On that score, she has to be a chance. I loved her two trials leading in. They've been soft trials. I think that's enough just to have her right first up over 1,200 metres. The negative is the gate. And BP, there's a lot of speed in this race. You look, look, you look at if in doubt, get out, draw on the ace. I'll try and hold a spot and not give up that draw. Sergio looks to be the leader, uh, leader here, but we will rock. G-string. And as I say, Bold Bell, who's got a sticky gate, will probably come across and... If they can find that spot 3-4 back in that ear, trailing that hot speed, that might be the old ideal spot. But, uh, yeah, a lot of speed in this race. There, there is. And even a horse that you mentioned taking a bit of money in G-strings, drawn mm. low, uh, it can potentially go forward and maybe even take a spot in behind uh, all, all that pressure with, with, with mm. wet track credentials next to its name as mm. well. So... It's all about what can find that sweet spot. Who can land yeah. one by one? Who can be one out, three back, tracking speed if they are going crazy up uh, uh, up top? So um, that, that could be the enigma about trying to work this race out. Mm. Look, in the end, I, I'm I'm keen to go with We Will Rock. I just okay. feel as though the horse sets up nicely for tomorrow, does have the second up record and uh, a lot of things in his favour. So, okay. yeah, that's where I'm heading. You're with We Will Rock. Paul, give us your final thoughts and then you, Steve. Uh, I don't mind the look uh, of Ariza Rees uh, for mine. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a, a nice sort of run. Uh, sh uh, she won't mind the rain either. Um, so I've got Ariza Rees on top, uh, if in doubt, uh, just in behind. And, and just uh, further to Steve's comment about the uh, market firming around G-string, usually that's not a good sign when there's a bit of firming around the G-string. <laughs> OK, well, I'll just go with my selections here. We will rock. Look, I've got him on top. He's the best horse. He's got the best per, uh, performance rating in the race. And the blinkers go on here. I think that's a key gear change for a horse that's second up here. You talk about his second up form lines, but the blinkers on. He doesn't have to lead, but he can position in that top two or three off that hot tempo and a bit of fire of the track will suit. And Bold Bell, just look for a push in the market around this horse. It, Notably could be quite soft just because it presents first up, but has the credentials. And Bradman, just with that big weight, 53 last weekend, suited this horse back up to 59. You go back on the seven-day backup performances around this horse, he definitely regresses. He's had a couple of placings from those four starts, so happy to take a set at the 550 Hill Drift on race day. OK, the team pretty keen around We Will Rock in the city of Napier Sprint. Let's head south. Big day at Rickerton, Steve. Some couple of great races, but before we touch on them, weather and track conditions for Rickerton. You're getting a few showers lurking around uh, Christchurch, uh, which is not ideal, but... Uh, Look, the rail goes back in the true position for one of many feature races uh, through the April and month uh, in the months of May. Um, look, it's currently a soft seven. Look, I don't think it's going to get uh, as heavy as Otaki, uh, but as I say, there is the, the odd showers forecast for today and race day. Uh, hopefully we get no worse than a seven, but I don't think it'll be any better if that makes sense, lads. Yeah, OK, it does make some sense. Look, two races we're going to have a look at, and I love them both. We're going to start with the TAB Southern Alps Challenge, Steve. Race number eight on the card. Run us through this market. It's the market at $2.40. In front of John O'Rocco at $7 in that second line, Miss Layla. Matt's got at $8, and double figures around Dazzling uh, Miss. Lady Talene has been well supported, 12 into 11. As has number 12, the Grey Goose. Uh, 13 into 11. Ears back at $12. Burgi, the impressive breeders, winner last start at $14. And best of the rest is Divine Sava 
at an $18 quote. So a couple that have played in that middle market, Thaddeus, the Grey Goose, Lady Tolina, etc. But Mystic Park is a horrible result when it comes to futures betting because it had a boost around it at $3 for the weeks leading into this event. Oh, those pesky boosts, uh, they've got us again. <laughs> look, Mystic Park BP, let's have a look at his run or his win. Uh, at Rickard and last time out, he was backed off the absolute map. There's a number of runners here. John O'Rocker, Lord Darcy, the buffer pro serve, and John O'Rocker's been competing well up north before running a nice third, but, gee, the money was strong for Mystic Park this day, and it didn't disappoint. It's the best thing the TAB ever bought in was boost. <laughs> it really is. And those that, uh, from the Vinery Stud Stakes uh, fame will be able to know exactly what I'm talking about with orchestral. But anyway, yes, this horse has been boosted, and it's got the runs on the board. Uh, he's just a horse that... Uh, Knows how to win at the moment. He's, he's got conditions that will be uh, up his alley as well. Um, I, I know the barrier draw uh, is certainly a niggle, uh, but it's just down to, to tenor.com finding that right spot. Yeah. She'll be able to, we know that she rides uh, Rickard in really well. So um, I think he's a bet. I really do think he's a play yeah. in the race um, just because he comes in with the, with the right form lines and he's, he's going to be really hard to beat with what we've seen of late. He's an up and comer. Yeah, he certainly is. And they've back, been backing him like an up and comer as well. Just a word on John L. Rocker. Um, he's com he's competitive. Uh, he's been running well, and that third behind Mystic Park was reasonably good. It was. Look, as you said, his form is is, is there to say that he's going to run another honest race. He, he was finishing on in that race in, in, into third position. Uh, they'll be hoping he's a horse that's you know predominantly slow away. He's drawn a middle gate, so uh, if he can find himself you know not not too far back mm, in, in the running, and he'll worry. be one that's closing in the race. So be yeah. be looking up for John L. Rocker, and especially if you're playing those trifectas in first fours. Yeah. Okay, Paul. We'll come to you with the next replay. It is Matt. Scott uh, in, in Vegas and Green Luck last time out at Rickerton. And Matt, got, Matt Scott got a well-deserved win, I thought, this day. Exactly. He'd been knocking on the door for a number of starts before this win uh, at Rickerton. Uh, and in the process, got the uh, boys get paid bless bet up. Uh, so a lot of very, very happy punters with uh, when Matt Scott did salute the judge there. Uh, look, he had an issue at the beginning of the year, but he seems to be over that now, and he seems to be a happy horse, uh, and he's well in the market at around the $8 market uh, at the moment. Uh, in Vegas, I thought that was a huge run by In Vegas after finding all sorts of trouble throughout the journey, especially over that last furlong. Look, if she gets um, in the field, she's a super, super lightweight chance, I think. Um, and earlier this year, I think she uh, ran second to the underbelly, who uh, just went on a tear after that, so... Um, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give her a, a big, big chance if she does make the field. And, of course, um, I think Green Luck was in there as well, um, has drawn the car park this time and has to carry 60 kilos, uh, just a couple of negatives against the chances of Green Luck. With, and I think that's why we see Green Luck down towards the bottom of the market. Yeah, OK. Uh, Steve, the South Island Breeders is the next race. Burgie was very good this day. Lady Talina in this race. Dazzling Miss, Miss Layla is back, etc. And Divine Saffer who always has support in uh, her races, but Burgie got the job done this day. Yeah, look, it was run at an even tempo, suiting all runners, that he is. Look, the overall speed rating, one and a half lengths below the class, and when you compare it to the Open 14, which was won by Mystic Park, the comparable speed ratings, they're comparable enough to, to fit them into the conversation at least. Um, yeah, look, Burgie should get a soft run from the draw, meets Lady Talena better off in the weights. Uh, but the latter does have the services of Warren Kennedy, Lady Tolina, who will be, be uh, better suited at Tadapa. Or, uh, sorry, better suited at Rickerton. It likes these big roomy tracks. Uh, obviously, we saw this horse venture up to the the CD at Trentham and and place in a Group 1 as well, Lady Tolina. So, look, she can be a low percentage play at times by the way she maps. She relies on tempo and luck and running come the business end of the race. But, um, yeah, look, they're, they're in the conversation. I suppose my question back to PP, and he's very keen on Mr Park and... He's got the numbers, there's no doubt about that. He did slightly regress uh, last start, only a fraction, maybe a length if you want to be uh, precise, but you're very keen on him, BP. With that draw, are you happy around the 230? Where do you see this SP? If you're, if you're happy for him, are you, are you willing to wait and you reckon that price will drift, or are you happy to take the 230? He may even firm on race day. Yeah, it's a tricky one, Stephen, mm. I think, this one, because the, the thing is, it is a horse that's been really well backed of late. Yes. So that's, that's, a, that's a key component, I think, first of all, is that this horse took a stack last time to the races. Yeah. I mean, you guys got hammered on it, to, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Uh, and th that, that could happen again, because yes. you know, punters that you know, got the sweet price that day, paid a short quote, uh, they, they might be keen to chime in again. Mm. Uh, he's a winner. 
uh, and he's a horse that we've seen in recent times winning around this venue. So they're all the reasons why you could get a, a, a shorter quote than what's presented today, uh, at the moment at $2.40. What's against it is a barrier draw uh, and also 1,600 metres where you might see a chance of getting around to that $2.50 zone, two sixty, and then other things get backed because of, of uh, maybe better barrier draws and also uh, a distance record. So that's where I'm a little bit on the fence about yeah. where the price could sit, um, but happy to be on the horse, uh, saying that the horse can win yeah. uh, tomorrow, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where the price might go. I have a little inkling that it might just, just sort of hover around where we're sitting, at, sitting yeah, at the moment. Probably not miles away from where it is, $2.30 or 40 at the moment. Look, I will stay with you, BP. Last re race replays from down south, Riverton, uh, for the fillies and mares, obviously. Miss Pearl, uh, Inflamed, and the Grey Goose, who ran sixth there. Yeah. And uh, boy, oh boy, there's been some market moves around this horse in recent times. I tell you what, the Grey Goose uh, certainly does get me as a, as a bit of a sneaky in the race. Uh, she's that sort of horse, uh, and she's, she's going to be one of those horses that'll that'll flash home uh, did actually beat Miss Pearl two starts ago did the Grey mm. Goose and what was a phenomenal performance look Miss Pearl was able to get the job done here and, and, and it backed up uh, a little bit of inspired support at the bigger price around Miss Pearl but gee the Grey Goose is one of those horses that I could be interested in having mm, something yeah. on if, as a saver for an each way or trying to find a top four or mm. trying to find a power play uh, maybe uh, if there's a, a both to run top four, uh, Mystic Park and, and the Grey Goose or something along those lines. So, um, yeah, the, the, the one out of that race, the Grey Goose is what I am liking as a, as a little sneaky. Yeah, I've just been the money on him lately. It's just been a little bit, not strange, but just been a lot of it. So you'd expect you might see something similar around the Grey Goose. Currently sitting around $11.00. Final thoughts here, boys. We'll come to you first. Steve, what are you going to be doing in the TAB Southern Alps Challenge this year? It's a tricky race. I do think the key form lines is the Rickerton form lines uh, versus the deep uh, South Island form lines. Uh, and obviously I'm, I'm, I'm warming towards Mystic Park, John O'Rocco, etc. Um, hard to assess the price around Mystic Park. I, I tend to agree with BP. I think it will become quite static for at least the next 12 hours and we'll just see closer to race start time the liability surrounding the favourite. But uh, look, there's one horse I think can run above betting expectations and currently is the Ranky at $31, Willis. This horse has just had no luck in its last two outings. You go back and watch its replays, it's had no luck whatsoever. He can be a low percentage play, I concede that. He's got low tactical speed and can be back in the last third. And again, rely on tempo, etc. But you go back three starts to back this individual bet, Burgi, and also the Grey Goose. And those two are well in the market in their low teens. So, look, I think if Willis can get the right tempo and doesn't have to be ridden for luck, maybe present down the outer part of the track, which may be the place to be with a little bit of showers throughout the day. So Willis, I can definitely involve in the conversation of top three, top four, etc. But uh, yeah, I'm warming towards Mystic Park and John O'Rocco as the key form lines. Uh, yep, yeah, John O'Rocco for me. Uh, I've got him on top. Uh, in fact, I think the, it's up towards the top of the market where you want to be looking. John O'Rocco, uh, Mystic Park as well. Uh, and then if she does make the field uh, in Vegas, I think uh, is a big, big lightweight chance. Sounds like you're all over the favourite here, Pops. I am, yep. Uh, Mystic Park, um, keen to be with it. Uh, being really impressed with what uh, this horse has been able to produce of late and, and there's no reason why he can't keep on winning uh, going up to 1,600 metres. And Yeah, the Grey Goose, just a, just a, a little couple of dollars there and um, maybe I'll be looking to try and play a, sort of a wider first four or something along those lines with the Grey Goose somewhere, sort of in that second, third, fourth line. I like where your head's at. OK, if you like the TAB Southern Outs Challenge, you're going to love the NZB Insurance Stakes. Steve, race number six on the card. I love this race. It's a fantastic race with the influence of the Northerners trekking down south, that is. Nefeti is the favourite at 3.8 and a well-backed commodity. We get this trend around Nefeti. There's a couple of aspects uh, to climb into around Nefeti is the fact that no rain ever is very soft in the market. 5.50 out of turn is $6. Dangerous liaisons has been a notable drifter, 7 out to 7.5. The second best back runner happens to be the Robbie Patterson train gallop, a number four, it's Doris. Sticky gate, but 13, got as high as 14, has been firm right into $11, currently a losing liability for the tab. Texas Dolly at $14. Outside that, a bit of sense of timing, uh, got as high as 18, brought back into 16, original price was $14. Mazzucato's been well found, 18 to 16, again naturally with that syndicate involved, can be a, a trend on the working week uh, leading into race day. but. In terms of the best bat runner, it clearly sits with number one, Nefeti, for Joe Doyle, the Richie Murray combo.
Yeah, OK, it's been well documented. Nafiti, uh, BP, the step up to 2100, maybe pushing to the Oaks. Didn't plan, pan out for them. Well, this panned out for them here back over the 1400. Look, it really did. And you got a price finding out too, yeah, didn't you, you did. with, with this horse? Because um, that, that was probably the most surprising thing with what she did go around. Because you think it's some of her times in a 65 around Hawke's Bay, I mean, she was punching around that $2 mark. Mm. Uh, so there was a chance to play $7, $8 uh, and you're re rewarded. Mm. She, she is a horse that they had to have a go because she's a yeah. three-year-old filly. Yeah, and exactly. they found out and they, and they decided, right, let's just let's just pump the brakes, bring her back uh, and trip. Yeah. And, and when you look at it and think, gee, 21 back to 1,400 metres. But it's just a case that she was a horse uh, that, that just needed a, a, a short course race. And she gets up to 1,600 metres. I don't think that's too much of a problem no. for her either because no. we've seen her at this distance already uh, winning twice uh, from two starts. So there's a lot of good things in her, in her mm. favour here. Low draw. Um, I, I guess where the track sits uh, as we talk Friday morning, but, you know, it should be hovering around that, that sort of soft range uh, mm. going off sort of those... those uh, forecast reports. She, she looks an outstanding chance. She really does. She's a, she's a nice filly. Good on the, the Richie and Cole Murray there for just just realising and, and just make, making the call. Yep. Bang, we're yep. going back. Yeah, well, look, 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 very good operators. Yeah. Uh, and we even saw that with Nereus and and the prospect of even Nereus getting to a, a Mornington Cup yes. is, is, is is you know just they just know how to place their yep. horses. Marajan, of course, have got uh, going for for three cups uh, this season, which would be a huge effort going from a New Zealand Cup to an Auckland Cup to a Sydney Cup. So, uh, mm. as I said, good operators. Sean, we know, who's been a fantastic trainer for a number of years, and Colin Murray, who's joined into that partnership, uh, has just been able to bring everything they need to bring to, to be a perfect partnership so far. So, yeah, let's mm. hope they can get the job done here. And they look, uh, to be honest with you, it looks like they found a nice race uh, yeah. to test her over 1,600 metres once a game. Is that the sun? Is that the it sun is? behind us? Certainly not rain. Okay. <laughs> It's not rain, it's not rain. No. Okay, Paul, uh, next second replay we want to have a look at is No Rain Never, a second favourite in the Cuddle States. Don't know why it's soft in the market, No Rain Never, because uh, this was a strong effort in a strong field. It was a very, very good effort by No Rain Ever, uh, up against the uh, mares, uh, and um, she probably wasn't in the best part of the track uh, coming down the straight. So I, I, I love the way that she just kept giving um, there, and look, I... I really like her chances uh, on Saturday. Um, I know she's drawn out wide, but that may not be the worst place to be um, if they do get a, be a wee bit of weather down there. Uh, look, the fave's going to be very hard to beat. Um, but, look, I, I, I can't really... I, I really like the uh, look of her. Just the way that she just kept trying um, in the cuddle, um, I, I think that poses uh, a big, big question for the favourite. Uh, in terms of no rain ever, so yeah, I give her a huge, huge chance. Yeah, okay, the Rickard and three-year-old Steve is the next one, and we see many combatants coming out of that, but it's Nakaya uh, that took it out, but Mazzucato uh, in the race, uh, Nakaya took it out, yes it did, Mazzucato, sense of timing, Texas Dolly, Epibio and Lady of Court all competed here, but it was good to see Nakaya get the chocolates this day. She was ridden well on this occasion. They've fairly uh, gone, uh, got at a slow tempo to the 600, so it really did suit on speed horses. The overall class rating minus 2.1. I think this form line is the B grade form line when you're comparing it to the likes of No Rain Ever and Nefeti. They do have to improve. Uh, we can see that with three old fillies. We can see significant improvement race by race, but on my numbers, they need to improve at least three lengths. So on that score, I'm just willing to take a set on that form line and gravitate back towards the Northerners in the Fetty in No Rain Never. Yeah, OK, the last replay we do want to have a look at BP, and there's been money for it. Steve mentioned it around mm. its Dolly and Robbie Patterson, and uh, you always respect that uh, that money. You do. Look, um, it's a combination we've seen that's had a great season, uh, Robbie Patterson. And look, it's Doris was, was able to win last time in a 65. Uh, she has barrier speed, she's that outside leader, and she got the job done here on this occasion. So, look, she's she had a couple of wins from seven starts. Nice race to be able to go and target for $80,000 mm, yeah. uh, over 1,600 metres and getting her out to distance that she has been able to perform at as well, uh, this three-year-old filly and, uh, by Tel Perry. And so, uh, good win so that she's in the right spot. Uh, a little bit of a niggly barrier draw. Uh, that, that, that'll be, the, yeah. I, I guess, the, the one niggle there where the horse might have to do a, a little bit of extra work if they want to try and find that position they got there last time to the races. Yeah, OK, $11, people willing to take a little bit of a punt around. It's Doris and the NZB Insurance Stakes. Final thoughts here, team. We'll come to you, Paul, first. Uh, how are you going to be attacking the NZB Insurance Stakes? Um, I'm going no rain ever on top of the favourite. Um, I just like the price at the moment. 
um, and, and I was really, really encouraged by her uh, run in the cuddle. It's an interesting one, uh, Paul, around the two favourites, Nefeti and No Rain Neva. On my numbers, it's hard to split them. And obviously the, the action is around or determined by the barrier draws and where they map. Nefeti drawn barrier three, has tactical speed to sit in the first three or four there and take a little bit of a cover. And No Rain Neva has drawn barrier 17. They'll probably default to go back to the last third. Remembering there's the War Step Stakes, gents, in a couple of weeks' time, over 2,000 metres. And I'd say a lot of the connections around a lot of these fillies will be Using this as basically a semi-final, uh, a lot of these horses will be crying out for 2,000 metres already, this preparation. I'm not saying no rain ever can't win the race, it's already looking for a mile and a quarter, but look, there's no bet at this stage, and, and nothing I want to like strongly lead towards, but if, there, if there's going to be this continuation of, of softness and drift around no rain ever, I think she becomes a play. Um, purely because I just couldn't separate them if they had drawn ideal gates or similar gates, but... Uh, yeah, look, I can understand the warm support around the Fed in the first 36 hours of trading, but if there's a continuation of of this price drifting and easing out on no rain ever, I might climb in come Saturday afternoon. BP? Yeah, look, it's an interesting race. I mean, even um, a, a horse like Dangerous Liaisons, uh, right at the bottom, uh, I mean, it's a horse that... I know he's well touted from the stable, but look, I'm with um, Nefeti. I think Nefeti has a lot of uh, things in its favour. Good draw uh, and looking outstanding win last time. High chance could get a very similar run. Mm. I'm going to stick with Nakaya, and, and maybe Nakaya is a horse that uh, we look towards the War Step Stakes. Uh, I definitely think there's something about her with the way that she won last time to the races. She should be able to get a soft run in, in transit, and if she can follow the right horse into the race, uh, she, she's worthy of a, of a couple of dollars at a bigger price, Nakai, uh, with how she won. Yep, she's going to have to improve, but a lot of horses are going to have to improve as well. But if she gets a, a soft suck into the race, uh, I'm happy to say that she might be a chance at, at, at big odds, Nakai. Four play time on the leg up for another week. We won't we won't dwell on last week's uh, four play, will we, BP? No. No. We know we're at no point even mentioning it because we're <laughs> gonna have a win this week in this week's four play. Head to the TAB Facebook page, interact uh, with the leg up question. Your favourite Hawks Bay Cup winner and you ooh. can be in to win. Yeah, exactly. There'd be a few to spring to your mind. This four leg bonus bet, hundred dollar multi of our four good things of the weekend. We'll start with you, Pops. Gee, Green Street, Italian Saint, Village and Plunder, <laughs> Torbo. Don't give them all away. <laughs> Torbo be my one. Uh, Hawks make up winner. Like, I'm going to go Orchestral. Uh, orchestral yeah, to win the Australian Oaks. She sits at $1.65. Paulie? Uh, I'm going the TAB Southern Alps Challenge. Um, and I'll give John Old Rocker a big, big chance. Um, I think uh, can finish in that top four. Uh, and I thought I'd boost up the four player a wee bit with a $2.40 divvy. Yeah, I'll go to the feature, the Hawks Bay Cup. I just feel Testify Me has uh, plenty going for it with hardly a knock. Um, yeah, decent in the draw. Uh, 55 kilograms. Chris Dow has a great association for this horse. He just needs to replicate what he produced at Trentham and he'd be going very close to winning. So I've just taken a bit of an insurance there. Top four at $1.45. Okay, and I've played the forgive card. We talked about the forgive card, BP. I'm Will Will Rock, top four at dollar fifty-five. Won't mind the easing of the track. That hundred dollar bonus bet multi could return you seven hundred and ninety dollars and one cent and one cent. Mm, I don't know. Helps. If Paul can yeah. all that was exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, go to the TV Facebook page, interact with a question. You could be in to win. Okay, best bet time on the leg up for another week. But before we have a look at what we've got this weekend, let's have a little look back at how we did last weekend. I've got a race number four at Trentham, that is the Higgins Concrete um, Manawatu Classic. I really do like the chances of the favourite in the race and just as sharp. Out of stock and just as sharp, investigate, tied it up, but it's out of stock for the Oaks winning trainer. Ormsby does it again on the Champagne Turf. I'm going to go to Trentham, uh, race two there, and I like the look of Sinbin. Sinbin trying to knuckle down, it's Navigator gripping on. Sinbin trying hard, the two phase, but Navigator won it. I'll go halfway through the card at Trentham. Race 5, the Manawatu two breeders. Apostrophe. Apostrophe surge to the lead, though, in the final 100 metres. Coming away, and Apostrophe is going to be too strong.
Everyone placed. Everyone placed. That's the positive spin we could put on it. Everyone had a place. Thank you to Stephen Hunt for getting us a winner. The good thing about racing, though, there's always another race around the corner, BP. <laughs> there is. There's always so, another how race. are we going to get a winner this weekend? <laughs> Look, I'm going to go um, a little left field. I'm going to go for a horse so the form lines aren't there. It's the first race out of Tarapa. I really like the chances of Kiwi Man at a bit of a price, hopefully. Uh, now, this is a runner that drops back uh, from open handicap and rating 75 races to a rating 65 in the first race of the day at Tarapa. Four starts ago, was able to win at that venue in 65 grade and does have 2,400 metre form. Uh, so we'll go with Kiwi Man in race one on Sunday. Yeah, OK. Uh, Paulie, what's your bet of the weekend? Uh, I'm going to Rickerton Park. I'm going to race five. It's a rating 75 benchmark over 2,000 metres. I think this is perfect for the Terry Ray trained aristocrat uh, Matthew Cameron on board um, just things look to be lining up for mine for aristocrat and oh, I think we'll see a very very good run here aristocrat currently five dollars yeah I'll go to the I'll go to the Hawks Bay uh, day at OTAC here early in proceedings race three uh, the rainy 65 1200 Missa Verde first up for Cody Cole which is a a great mode to punt into because he gets his horses ready to go when they present to the races. This victory here back in October at Todong are rated through the roof. In fact, he rated or she rated a 91.7 in terms of my performance ratings, which currently ranks number one on all maiden victories thus far this season, Mesa Verde. So, look, again, she, she ran very uh, credibly, uh, credibly uh, second performance uh, or third performance second up this preparation. Uh, I think she's got tactical speed to jump, put herself in the race for Ryan Elliott and be hard to chase down the Otaki home straight. OK, there's three winners. Thank you, team, for the weekend. We'll take those, put them in our bank, and we'll be back next week to critique how you have gone. OK, bonus back time on the leg up. We've got the bonus back runners suggested for you, but here's the second, third or fourth bonus back as usual. Races one to four, Rickett and Otaki, Ranwick and Bendigo. Obviously the Grand Tour has now ended for another year, but uh, it was nice to have six. But back to four, Rickett and Otaki, Ranwick and Bendigo. Plenty of chances to get stuck in there. Uh, we've come with some suggested uh, bonus back runners. BP's gone Mr Mojo Rising, paying about $4. I like it. Won't mind a little bit of rain. Race number four, Otaki. Uh, Paul race one, Milanese. For him, Stephen's gone Lincoln Falls race four at Otaki, and I went down south. Our echo been jumping out of its skin up north. Hopefully, it can take that form back down south in race number three. Our echo will be a big chance there. Okay, boys, time to head off for another week. Well, um, what are you doing, Paul? I think you're heading up, uh, heading up our way, aren't you? Yeah, oh, I think BP's learned a very valuable lesson uh, today. Uh, don't invite Thad up. He brings the rain. Um, but don't worry, I'm on my way, BP, and I'm bringing the sunshine. So it's going to be a huge, huge night at Cambridge. So if you're around, you might want to pop down there. I might have a, a, a bet or two to hand out to punters. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, head to the um, website and uh, the Night of Champions Hub. The boys have got all sorts of boosted odds for you to get stuck into. Um, mm. If you don't like harness or you're not familiar with harness racing, uh, you can join the Boys Get Paid Punters Club. Um, still opportunity, if you're watching this live on Friday morning, still an opportunity to join that. They'll be having a good old go. Uh, and, of course, there's a bonus back promotion on the first four races at the Cambridge tonight, back to second and third. So, yeah, I'll be looking after BP. You co you're coming up, Steve? Uh, well, I don't even know what's happening. Is it a harness meeting tonight? Or some meeting the truth, is it? Oh, <laughs> take it. <laughs> thank you, no, I'm looking Steve, next week, for your gents. efforts as always. Thank Easter you, Easter Handicap next Saturday. Yeah. Hopefully we're at Ellerslie, uh, uh, but it should be a belt. I love a big, genuine group uh, group race at, at handicap conditions, so can't wait. Yeah, Ellerslie, fingers crossed all around that. Uh, BP, enjoy your night tonight. Yeah, will do. Should yeah. be a lot of fun, uh, and uh, let's hope that rain keeping away. It has so far, so in the last half an hour, yeah. so... Yeah, you're dry. Not by am dry. Yeah, yeah, all good. I'm, no problem. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing to worry about. Hope you have nothing to worry about on your weekend of betting. We'll see you in seven days' time on The Leg Up.